In 74 BC, a great battle was to have been fought between the armies of General Lucius Lucinius Lucullus, pitted against Marius of Mithridates. But just as the two combatants were about to engage, a silvery object shaped like a pithos, a Roman wine jug, fell between them and unsettled them so much, both armies simply turned around and went home. Could this be the description of an alien intervention, saving tens of thousands of lives, or simply imaginations pushed over the edge by the stresses of the confrontation? Join myself and Neil here on Aliens Explored as we debate the Pythos UFO of Phrygia in 74 BC. And this week's episode is brought to us by our Explorer of the Week. And this week, it is Israel. Thank you so, so much to Israel and to all of our Patreon patrons who help support us and help make this podcast a reality. We love each and every one of you. If you too want to help support us, then go to patreon.com forward slash aliens explored. There's a link in the description below and pick a tier that suits you. Explorer of the Week is just one of those tiers, but there are many others with some absolutely fabulous rewards. So do go and have a look. Aliens Explored is a weekly podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Aliens Explored, your weekly look at the mysterious skies, ancient and modern. Uh, my name is Neil Kelly, I'm one of your hosts. And I'm your other host, Stu Jackson. How are you doing, Neil? It's been it's been a it, while. It's been too long, hasn't it? We, we, we restarted this podcast, we said we were going to be regular, and uh, of course life gets in the way. It and such. does. And, it and having a job and everything. You know, that, that, um, that doesn't help. I mean, they've, they've changed the hours of my job, so... Um, they, they, they said that you know they, they've moved everything forward, but what it means is that where I used to have a whole morning off and we're sort of going early afternoon, now I'm not really getting that morning time. But I'm also there isn't really a quid pro quo of more evening time, so mm. like work life balance has, has has gone down in quality slightly, but uh, I'll stick with it for now. Because anyway, this week we're going back um, back to ancient times, back to 74 BC. Yes. Um, to ancient Phrygia. So just remind me, where is Phrygia? Uh, is it, does it still exist as a place? Uh, well, it, it does, uh, except it's now what we call Turkey. Okay. Right. Uh, it's that area. Um, or part of Turkey, so yeah, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, borders and 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 what have you have shifted and changed, but pretty much, if you think Turkey, you're you're in the well, right vicinity. I mean, a lot of places from around that time are still around, not even renamed, are they? We just don't really think of you know, we think of going to Turkey. You don't think, oh, I'm going to Phrygia or Anatolia or. I always think well, back to uh, the song, and in fact, I can't hear the name of a certain place without thinking of this song. And 
If I just say that to you, Neil, I mean, you know what song I'm talking about? To do with Phrygia? No, or... no, not to do with Phrygia. But uh, not, I mean, that generally that part of the world, actually. The Middle East. There's a famous song. And whenever anyone mm. says the name of the place, I have to say the second part of the line of the song. Okay, um... This one's gone so far over my head, I think it represents a hazard to commercial air traffic right now, so <laughs> it's, you've lost me. All right, well, if I say to you, Istanbul, mm. what's the next part of the song? I don't know that song. <gasps> you don't know that song? Istanbul, no Constantinople, is Istanbul, no Constantinople. You don't know that song? That sounds familiar. Oh, my goodness. That's an incredibly famous song. I, I forget who did it. Um is it is it putting on the Ritz? It's a similar <laughs> sort of tune. <laughs> putting on the Ritz. Uh, <laughs> Istanbul. They might be giants. There we go. They might be giants. Okay. Oh, but no. it was originally a uh, 1953 swing style song. Okay. Uh, lyrics by Jimmy Kennedy and music by Nat Simon. Right. There you go. Written on the fifth, okay. fifth hundred anniversary of uh, the renaming. The fifth hundredth? Yeah, five hundredth, five hundred, fifth hundred. I'm, what, you know, English what, since it, losing speaking ability. Really? I, th- I thought Istanbul was a much more modern name for it than that. I mean, I mean, people would still refer to Constantinople, wouldn't they? I mean... I mean, we sort of do. I think that's what it... Um, uh, what it was? Uh, Certainly, I think in the, in the in the First World War, when Britain was at war with Turkey, they were talking about Constantinople. Oh, sorry, uh, it was the five hundredth anniversary of the fall of Constantinople to the Ottomans. Ah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's me getting that wrong. It was five okay. hundredth anniversary, but yes, just a different one. Uh, but okay. there we go. Yeah. Well, of course, one one of the old empires that uh, didn't survive the First World War. Mm. Indeed. Turning Turkey into a republic. Mm. There we go. And that brings us right back to Turkey or Phrygia as it was known. And uh, as you rightly mm. say, 74 BC. Uh, so, mm. some while ago. Um, this is an account of the Battle of, oh, no, 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 excuse my pronunciation, uh, Otria. How do you spell it? O T R Y A E. Otria. Okay, well, yeah, we'd have to. <clears throat> I mean, this is a Roman. We'd have to ask spelling. a Turk how that's. <laughs> well, no, you'd have to ask uh, a Roman. In fact. Okay, uh, when well, no, a they, Roman account, Roman spelling, and they were campaigning out in the east in in what is now Turkey. Well, they were they uh, were obviously pushing forward and and part of the whole Roman Empire or the Holy mm. Roman Empire, not just the whole Roman Empire, mm. uh, the whole Holy Roman Empire. There you go. Um, well, actually, the Roman Empire mm. uh, pre Christianity pre. I mean, the the three things you need to know about the Holy Roman Empire of, of latter times is that it wasn't holy, it wasn't Roman, and it wasn't an empire. <laughs> <laughs> That's the three things you... Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't the know. The clue, but... isn't it? I don't the, the... Oh. I don't know if we have time to go down that much of a... <laughs> no, let, let's, let's cut the chase, because what, what, we're, what we're really here to talk about is a, a UFO that was it spotted is. By, is. by Roman legions out in Phrygia. Yeah. And and it's described as a pythos-shaped UFO. Pythos, yes. What's a pythos shape? Uh, it's pythos, a... P-Y-T-H-O-S. Yeah. Pythos, um, or Pythoi as well, is the other. Uh, it's a large wine container. Uh, so these are basically, these are two-handled jars that are hmm. narrower at the bottom, and they widen out to where the handles are. 
and then they go in and then you've got the lip of it above. Uh, it's quite a sort of common sight in in uh, artwork of the time and things like that. It's, I okay. mean, they, they we used the storage jars of, of all kinds, but... Um, uh, well, when they also used as projectiles, wouldn't they fill them with some flammable liquid, attach a burning rag to it, put it on a catapult, and it was just like a, a huge Molotov cocktail? When they were okay. in the Romans, I think the I, Romans had that kind of... I'd not heard that, um, but if they were going to do it with anything, then a, 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 a pithos would be... I think... I think the well the Greeks did it. I mean Greek fire, they would whatever yeah. that was. I don't know what Greek fire was. It's some magical uh, substance that it was a chemical, yeah. It was a chemical um, that they, they discovered was very inflammable and yeah, you could <laughs> That's it. Um Who was it who once said that uh, a flamethrower is evidence that someone once thought those people over there, I'd like to set them on fire, but they're too far away. And so that's how they devise the flamethrower. It must be a similar kind of thinking. <laughs> okay, I mean the, the this whole... pithos-shaped projectile full of flaming. If, if such a, <laughs> any listeners who can correct the historical record here, please do get in touch. <laughs> yeah. And let's have the Romans or the ancient Greeks or, or even the Turks. Maybe the Turks were were launching these things. Maybe. Um, I mean, the thing I love about the ancient Greeks is that they invented steam engines. They had steam engines in wow. ancient Greece. That is quite that's, uh That's quite a thing, isn't it? Um, that yeah. That is quite a thing. Uh, yeah, look that up, listeners. It's a thing. Um, so... Yes, coming back to the Battle of Otria, or Otria, or Otiria, mm. or yes, Death Battle. Um, you've got on one side, ding ding, round one, um, in the blue corner, you've got the Romans uh, led by Consul uh, Lu- Lucullus, mm-hmm. Lucullus um, and his 30,000 soldiers behind him. And on the other side, you've got Punchin Monarch. Oh, the, the pronunciations are going to be awful mm. in this. Mm. Mithridates the Sixth, Eupator. Right. When you say he's 30,000 men behind him, of course, the modern way for a general to fight a voice have is 30,000 men a long way in front of him. Bit. Behind him, metaphorically, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. He had their support. He so, supported them from. He led them from the rear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so uh, consul uh, Lu- Lucullus, Lucullus, mm. uh, he comes over the hill uh, with his thirty thousand troops, mm. and is. Kind of, he's got a uh, squeaky bum moment when he sees the size of the opposing army way bigger than he expected. Um, hmm. Like I say, that's uh, Mithridates the Sixth Eupator's army. Um, but still, he resolves to fight, and this is his own account. It it has to be said. So we're not hmm. uh, we're not talking. Th- this whole UFO account is not. Taken from an, obs- an an outside observer, this is uh, Lucillus himself. Okay, wrote his account. So they they set to charge all these troops. They set charging between them, and just as they are about to reach each other, out of the sky, the sky rips open. The weather doesn't change, but the sky rips open, and a and I'll I'll quote a huge flame like body mm. fell between the two armies, <coughs> shaped like a pithoi, a wine jar, mm. and molten silver in colour. Now this uh was a little bit rain stops play. Um mm-hmm. the, because it's basically fell between the two armies, uh, they each turned round and went home again. Hmm. 
So I'm thinking this has got to be a pretty big bloody thing. It's not, you know, we're, we're not talking about a small, um, you know, pithos. We're talking about a big thing that's just shaped like a pithos. Now, what I'm taking that mm. to mean is it was narrower at the bottom and larger at the top. Okay. And, and sort of conical shaped. And did they say what kind of size it might be? Uh, I don't believe he did specify. I, I imagine it was pretty big. If it was, yeah, it's going to be something too big to have been launched from a catapult, isn't it? You'd certainly think so. Um, so, in fact, I'll, I'll give you a direct translation of the mm. whole thing. Uh, he led his army against Mithridates, having 30,000 foot soldiers and 2,500 horsemen. But when he had come within sight of the enemy and seen with amazement their multitude, he desired to refrain from battle and draw out the time. But Marius, whom Sertorius had sent to Mithridates from Spain with an army, came out to meet him and challenged him to combat. And so he put his forces in array to fight the issue out. Hmm. But presently... As they were on the point of joining battle, with no apparent change of weather, but all on a sudden, the sky burst asunder, and a huge flame-like body was seen to fall between the two armies. In shape, it was most like a wine jar, and in colour, like molten silver. Both sides were astonished at the sight and separated. This marvel, as they say, occurred in Phrygia, it's a place called Otrae. Okay. Otre, that one. So, kind of light on detail. I mean, I can imagine how the Roman general arrives on the battlefield to see a massive Turkish army way outnumbering him, and he's thinking, actually, I don't feel like fighting today, whereas the Turkish general is going to see the smaller Roman army. <laughs> let's get in there. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's wipe them out. Um, just just to be a little bit pedantic, Spanish army. Spanish, okay, Spanish army, right. Okay, a Spanish <laughs> just army. Just to confuse things further. <laughs> okay, attacking from the east, even so they've, they've travelled somehow all the way around and... Uh, <clears throat> or they were already occupying. Already occupying, and okay. It doesn't say what this object did. I mean, it came out of the sky. Mm-hmm. Did it hit the ground? Did it explode? Did it... Doesn't say. I mean, remain hovering you above know, them. You don't know as much as I do. But tore yeah, the sky so, asunder. That's very dramatic. That's very dramatic language. What would that even look like? Would that look like a lightning bolt? I suppose a lightning bolt would be one good description. Maybe, um, uh, maybe sort of pulling clouds apart. Hmm. I mean, I'm thinking portal in my head. Okay. I don't know what I'm thinking. So this thing came out of the sky. You're um, thinking, who picked this as a topic for us to debate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's we have we had this kind this this shape UFO before. This isn't something we. We well, recognize. Here, here's the one of the problems uh, is he doesn't say it looks exactly. Like, he said it is most like hmm. a pithos. Because from that era, we've heard of flaming shields and flaming spear shaped things, which you know we can see how we have. And do you uh, know what? If you get a spearhead mm. and and turn it point down, mm. that looks like a pithos. Okay. And he says most like. So, yeah, I can... Um, like a fat spearhead. Fat spearhead, yeah. But he yeah. wasn't... Th- even though he was going into battle, he was thinking about wine rather than spearheads. I mean, yeah. I, if ever I had to go into battle, I'd want uh, to be thinking about wine. <laughs> but they, they didn't hang around to find out what the thing was. They just... Uh, they all... Thousands no. and th- however many thousands of men there were there. Um, Paul just said, let's leave this one alone. Nope. Astonished at the sight and separated. Hmm. Now, this wouldn't be the first case of 
a UFO allegedly interfering with a dramatic historical event. Um, there are lots and lots of uh, occasions throughout history of such claims. Now, a lot of these claims get uh, purported to being God intervening or the angels mm. intervening and things like that. But but ultimately, you know, it boils down to the same thing. And it, in fact, it came from mm. the sky. They could have said one of the gods sent this mm. this um, pithos to intervene or to mm. make his will known. I'd like to read a more definitive story of this this battle. That well, I guess it wasn't a battle, was there? But no, did it, did, they the didn't come back. Never happened. They they didn't come back the next day, and nope. Slug it out. They just, that, that's it. Game over. We're going home. Yep, yeah, that's exactly it. Exactly it. Forget our <coughs> dreams of imperial conquest. Yeah, no, mate. We're done. <laughs> we're done with that. We saw this pithos-shaped thing, and we're not going back there. Now it was, a, I, it was an omen. I'm going to throw in a bit of modern context, and I, I find it really interesting that it specifically describes its colour as that of molten silver. Now, isn't molten silver the same colour as just silver? Uh, or is, or does it go a different colour? Does it go? I think it it goes more of a matte colour. Silver is okay. typically polished, isn't it? Yeah. So, so it would be more like a matte silver, non-shiny. But also, it okay. might be describing an undulation in its surface. You know, think mm. about um, mercury uh, as an example, mm. which is shiny. It's shiny, um, but it's it's liquid form, so you know hmm. it shifts. Um, now we are trying to interpret what he meant by that, and obviously we can't interrogate him on it. Um, but either way, whether we're talking matte silver or a liquid effect on it, hmm. that really does sound like a, a UFO to me. A, a, a flying. Well, obviously not a flying saucer, but a uh, a spacecraft. Hmm. It does. I mean, any, any kind of supernatural event from antiquity sounds like a spacecraft, doesn't it? Anything coming out of the sky. Well, we've discussed a number of different things. We've heard heard various UFOs as being described as um, golden in colour. Uh, hmm. And and things like that. This is the first time I've heard of one being described as silver. Yeah, that I can think of. That's quite got rarity value right there. Yeah, and it wasn't a meteorite or a no. Nope. Or anything, anything actually from space that would be, could have quite a devastating effect if it hit. And and let's not forget, you know, the, the Romans, they knew about meteorites. They knew what they were. Mm. Knew about comets. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we also know that all sorts of fanciful stories come out of battlefields from ancient to modern times, something of the... the the, the ghost army of Mons in the First World War, where this, um, it was a Welsh journalist invented this story about the Battle of Mons and how the ghosts of ancient knights, 11th century knights, rose up and fought alongside our, our brave Tommies holding back the German advance. And he just made it up. He was just, he was just waxing lyrical. And, but then when he got home, there were people who were coming up to him constantly saying, Oh, yes, my son was at the Battle of Mons and he saw that ghost army. <laughs> just made it up. But, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, mm. it's and and things like yeah, even I'm also thinking of the Christmas Day truce when troops um, allegedly came out of the trenches on both sides and and celebrated Christmas Christmas Day together in I no man's football. land and played football. <laughs> um, now I looked at this and there, there don't seem to be any actual photographs of it. There are lots of artists' impressions of it, 
and there doesn't seem to be any report of anyone who was actually there. But lots of soldiers heard it was going on further up the line, or they heard that it had happened further up the line. You know, troops had come out of their trenches and met each other and exchanged presents and played football. But no one can, no one said, oh yeah, I was there. It was all, it was all, it all happened to someone else. Mm. Apparently, apparently, there is some historical doubt as to whether that actually occurred. A bit like um, the Sex Pistols playing at the Rock Garden venue in Covent Garden. How many thousands of people were there? <laughs> <laughs> Some are getting on a million, you know, if you believe everyone <clears throat> claims to have been there. Yes, yes. Um, well, you get the same in America with Woodstock over here, the first Glastonbury. I mean, the first Glastonbury, there was like, you know, maybe a thousand people there. Hmm. But, yeah, you hear stories. They of, were like, all yeah, there, yeah. Ca- Counted all up. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, well, they say, yeah. they say about well, they say about the sixties, don't they? Not just about Woodstock. That you know, if you if you remember it, then you weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there in spirit, I'm sure. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I I I get what you're saying, um, but at the same time, unfortunately, I think with these historical events, and I know I've, mm. I've sort of said this before. I think we have to take it with a degree of, well, what he's saying is, you know, reasonably accurate. Now, where where things are open to interpretation, yes, we have to accept mm. that multiple possible interpretations are there. But, um, <laughs> but the, the sky's open. This thing appeared, but what what does it do? So it didn't. We we don't know, do we? We don't know if it. He didn't say whether it crashed to earth or or hovered over us or started taking out people with ray guns. Yeah. Well, it, it was seen to fall between the two armies. That suggests to me that it either crashed or landed. Hmm. <coughs> because otherwise it would be, it was seen to fall and then hung over the two armies. Yeah. But to, to seem to fall between the two armies, that suggests it, it, it Landed or yeah. hit the ground. It hit the ground, but um, whether by design or mm. accident, uh, we don't but I, know. I think you know most soldiers advancing into battle, something really weird appears and comes down in front of them. Mm. They're going to ask, "Is that one of ours, or is that something of theirs? <laughs> is this some kind of weapon? Is it our weapon? Is it their weapon? Should we run away? Should we? Should we encourage to advance?" Yeah. Mm. Presumably, the general would know. So well, that, that's not one of ours. Maybe they both thought it was some secret weapon the other side had, whatever it was. Ooh, maybe um, that's certainly a thought. Uh, but here's the thing: I'm, I, I, I think with Lucullus, he had thirty thousand troops there. If he mm. was making it up, oh, that word would get around. Also, I mean that that's going to be kind of hard to turn around if you've you've got thirty thousand men riding into battle, and then something happens in in front of their lines. Well, I mean they're going to be on a wide. Ex- I mean the Roman way of um, fighting was that you extend in a wide line that they would overlap. I mean obviously it doesn't <laughs> doesn't work so well against a, an army that is superior numbers, but they would mm. basically cover the entire front line and wrap around and then gradually work their way around to surround them and and. Pencil because the way right. that works is if you've got a huge army, um, most people in that army can't fight. It's only the ones at the front who can fight. Mm. Um, you're, you're kind of um, reduce, you're reducing their odds in your favour or the, the odds in, in their favour by, by placing them in such a way that most of the men are kind of trapped in a crowd of their own people and can't can't fight you. Mm. So... Um, it would that with thirty thousand men that would be quite a wide front they'd be advancing on to try and get them to to turn back, and at the same and, and you know if and if if you see the other armies running away you're gonna think oh yeah that must have been that must have been one of ours let's let's go after them it's, and once people's blood is up, but so this must have been quite something to to turn around turn around two armies two armies of tens of thousands of men. Yeah, so 
it is it 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 is tricky. I get to do these things, but like you say, you know, you've got thirty thousand. 30,000 Romans on one side, and yeah, mm. it must have been some pretty big event that's got them to just stop in their tracks, turn around, and go home. Yeah. So I'm inclined to believe the account as written. That some silvery yeah, a... thing came down from the sky. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it seems we've, we've got one account of it. Um, this battle that didn't happen. This battle that this general. I mean, in fact, that we've got an account from the general who didn't want to fight the battle anyway when he saw he was hugely outnumbered. Mm. Um, yes. I mean, there'd be a motivation to make something up, wouldn't there? And, and having visions of the supernatural could, in some societies, give you credibility. You know, you were obeying the gods. The gods ordered you not to fight. I get it, that. It wasn't, it wasn't just you deciding this is a really fucking bad idea. We're going to get slaughtered here. I get that. And if it was him and three men or 30 men, mm. maybe even 300 men, but 30,000? That's yeah, a lot of people to... We've, we've only got the account of the one person who saw it, haven't we? Mm. That he knows that those... Those 30,000 men, their voices are never going to be heard. There we go. Well, hmm. what do you think, listeners? Is uh, is the battle in Phrygia that never happened, uh, was it due to extraterrestrial intervention? Was it just some natural occurrence that got misinterpreted, or was it something else? Do let us know what you think via the usual means. You can contact us through Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can uh, email us, aliensexplored at gmail.com, or you can uh, leave a comment in our YouTube channel as well. Search for Aliens Explored there. Give us a quick like and subscribe, because uh, we're trying to grow that channel at the moment, so that would be appreciated. And, uh, of course, if you are one of our Patreon members as well, you get exclusive access to our Discord server. Links to all of those things are in the description below. So, join us next time when Neil and I, Neil, we're going to be mm. looking at Project Aquarius. Now, there have been lots of projects. One. Lots of Project Aquarius, haven't they? So which, which one's this? This is the one connected with the Starseed operation in the CIA. Mm. So it's going to be spicy. You really don't want to miss that. <laughs> in the meantime, keep watching out for anything interfering with historical events. And, of course, keep watching the skies. Take care for now. (laughs) Bye-bye. Aliens Explored is a Fecal Films production in association with Juicy Falls. Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter or Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit us on aliensexplored.com.